Purgatory Explained, Part 2, Chapter 50 Advantages Prayers of the Souls for Us Suarez, St. Bridget, St. Catherine of Bologna, Venerable Vianney We have just spoken of the gratitude of the Holy Souls. This day sometimes manifests, as we have seen, in a clearly visible manner, but most frequently they exercise it invisibly by their prayers. The souls pray for us not only when, after their deliverance, they are with God in heaven, but even in their place of exile and in the midst of their sufferings. Although they cannot pray for themselves, yet by their supplications they obtain great grace for us. Such is the express doctrine of two eminent theologians, Bellarmine and Suarez. These souls are holy, says Suarez, and dear to God. Charity urges them to love us, and, as, and they know, at least in a general way, to what dangers we are exposed, and what need we have of the divine assistance. Why, then, would they not pray for their benefactors? Why? But it will be answered because they know them not. In that dismal abode, in the midst of their torments, how can they know who are those that assist them by their suffering? To this objection, it may be applied. The soul feels at least the alleviation which they receive and the assistance which is given them. This suffices, even should they be ignorant of the source whence it came, to call down the benedictions of heaven upon their benefactors, whosoever they may be, and who are known to God. But in reality, do they not know from whom they receive assistance in their sufferings? Their ignorance of this is not no wise proved, and we have strong reason to believe that no such ignorance exists. Would their angel guardian who dwells there with them to give them all the consolation in his power, deprive them of this consoling knowledge? Is this knowledge not conformable to the doctrine of the communion of saints? Would the intercourse which exists between us and the church sufferings not be more perfect for its being reciprocal, and that the souls know their benefactors better? This doctrine is confirmed by a great number of particular revelations and by the practice of several holy persons. We have already said that St. Bridget, in one of her ecstasies, heard several cries aloud. Lord God, all-powerful, reward a hundredfold those who assist us by their prayers and who offer to you their good works, in order that we may enjoy the light of your divinity. <clears throat> we read in the life of St. Catherine of Bologna that she had a most tender devotion toward the holy souls in purgatory, that she prayed for them very frequently and with great fervor, that she recommended herself to them with the greatest confidence in her spiritual necessities and advised others to do the same, saying, When I wish to obtain any favor from my Father in heaven, I have recourse to the souls that are detained in purgatory. I entreat them to present my request to the Divine Majesty in their own name, and I feel that I am heard through their intercession. 
a holy priest of our own day, the cause of whose beatification has been commenced in Rome, Venerable Vienni, cure of ours, said to an ecclesiastic who consulted him, Oh, if it were but known how great is their intercession, they would not be so much forgotten. We must therefore pray much for them, that they may pray much for us. These last words of Venerable Vianney indicate the true manner of having recourse to the souls in purgatory. We must assist them to obtain their prayers and the effects of their gratitude in return. We must pray much for them that they may pray much for us. There is no question here of invoking them as we invoke the saints in heaven. Such is not the spirit of the church, which, before all else, prays for the departed and assists them by her sufferings. But it is no wise contrary to the spirit of the church, nor to Christian piety, to procure relief for the souls with the intention of obtaining in return, through the assistance of their prayers, the favors which we desire. Thus it is laudable and pious act to offer a mass for the departed when we are in need of any particular grace. If when the holy souls are still in their sufferings, their prayers are so powerful, we may easily conceive that they will be much more efficacious when Being entirely purified, these souls stand before the throne of God. If when the holy souls are still in their suffering, their prayers are so powerful, we may easily conceive that they will be much more efficacious when being entirely purified, these souls stand before the throne of God. Purgatory, Part 2, Chapter 51 Advantages Gratitude of the Divine Spouse of Souls If the souls are so grateful toward their benefactors, our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves those souls, who receives as done to himself all the good which we procure for them, will bestow an abundant recompense, very often, even in this life, and always in the next. He regards those who show mercy and punishes those who forget to show it toward the suffering souls. Let us first see an example of chastisement. Venerable Archangela Panagola, a Dominican religious and prioress of the monastery of St. Martha in Milan, had extraordinary zeal for the relief of the souls in purgatory. She prayed and obtained prayers for all her deceased friends, and even for those unknown to her, but of whose death she had been notified. Her father, Gothard, whom she tenderly loved, was one of those Christians of the world who seldom thought of praying for the dead. He himself died, and quite disconsolate, Archangela understood that her dear father stood more in need of prayers than of her tears. She therefore took the resolution of recommending him 
to God by special suffrages. But, strange to say, this resolution was scarcely ever carried into effect. This girl, so pious and devoted to her father, did very little for his soul. God permitted that, notwithstanding her holy resolution, she continually forgot him and inter interested herself in behalf of others. Finally, an unexpected event explained this unwanted forgot forgetfulness and aroused her devotion in behalf of her father. On the Feast of All Souls, she remained secluded in her cell, exclusively occupied in exercises of piety and penance for the relief of the poor souls. Suddenly, her angel appeared to her, took her by the hand, and conducted her in spirit into purgatory. Among the first souls which she, she saw, she recognized that of her father, plunged in a pond of icy water. Scarcely had Gothard seen his daughter, then, coming towards her, he reproached her sorrowfully for having abandoned him in his suffering, while she showed so much charity toward others, whom she constantly relieved and frequently delivered those who were strangers to her. Archangela stood for some time confused by these reproaches, which she knew she had merited. Soon, however, shedding a torrent of tears, she replied, I will do, my dear father, all that you ask of me. May it please God to give ear to my supplications and speedily deliver you. Meanwhile, she could not recover from her astonishment, nor understand how she could thus have forgotten her beloved father. Having taken her back, her angel told her that this forgetfulness had happened by a disposition of divine justice. God, he said, has permitted it in punishment for the little zeal which during life your father manifested for God, his own soul, and that of his neighbor. You saw how he was tormented and benumbed in a lake of ice. This was the chastisement of his tepidity in the service of God and his indifference with, re with regard to the salvation of souls. Your father was not an immoral man, it is true, but he showed little inclination for the acquirement of virtue and for the practice of those works of piety and charity to which the church exhorts to faithful. This is the reason why God permitted that he should be forgot forgotten, even by you, who would have given him too much relief. This is the chastisement ordinarily inflicted by divine justice upon those who are lacking in fervor and charity. He permits that others should conduct themselves in their regard as they have acted towards God and towards their brethren. Moreover, this is the rule of justice which our Savior has established in the gospel. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Matthew 7, 2